When working with DAX measures, there are two ways to construct them, either implicitly or explicitly. Let's look at the pros and cons of each approach. A pro for implicit measures is that they're created automatically by the data model. By placing a field in a visual's calculation well, a measure is automatically created. With explicit measures, you must write the formula yourself, like writing a formula in Excel. You could consider this a con, but it's really just normal behavior when working with spreadsheets. The cons for implicit measures are many. One is repetitive customization. Each time an implicit measure is created, even if from the same field, the output of the measure must be customized. With explicit measures, formatting is part of the measure. Formatting is applied once to the measure and repeated through the visuals regardless of the number of visuals that use the measure. Implicit measures can't be edited. The formula logic is held behind the scenes and cannot be directly accessed by the user. Explicit measures can be edited to do things like change filter context, formatting, etc. Implicit measures can't be used by other measures. An explicit measure's output can be used as another measure's input. This reduces the number of redundant calculations and reduces both development and maintenance time. Changes to an implicit measure in a visual is specific to that visual. When using the same implicit measure in multiple visuals, a cosmetic or logic change will likely require repeating that change across all applicable visuals. With explicit measures, changes are global, so they affect all visuals simultaneously. Implicit measures cannot be used in calculation groups. Explicit measures can be used in calculation groups. Calculation groups are beyond the scope of this video, but if they're important to you, then you're unlikely to use implicit measures. Let's see these behaviors in action with a few examples. So we'll start in the table view with a table of transactional information. We've got date, the item sold, who sold the item, how much it cost to produce, the quantity sold, and the sale amount, which is just the cost times the quantity. If we move over to the report view, we'll begin by building a matrix. For the rows, we'll add who sold the item and what that item is. And for the values, we'll place the sale amount. Notice that sale amount has this sigma symbol. That tells us that this can be used in implicit calculations. Typically, it's a column of numbers. So we can do things like sum them, average them, etc. So let's customize the matrix. I'm going to give it some more screen real estate. I'm going to expand all the entries. We'll go to our formatting controls. I'm going to change the global font size to 12. I'm going to turn off the plus minus buttons. I'm going to deactivate step layout and we'll give it a style preset using the alternate row style. I'm going to pull this down so we can get the icons out of our way. Now we've got a couple issues with this. One is notice the ugly heading sum of sale amount. If we go back and look at the visuals field wells, sale amount is the name of the field and sum of sale amount just as the natural heading whenever you use an implicit measure. We can change that by double clicking the entry in the value section and then call it whatever we want, like total sales. So now we have a better header. Notice the decimal place precision in the total sales. So we're going to have to go to specific column and then scroll down and set the decimal place value to two decimal places. And now we've got a fairly decent matrix. Let's go in and add another field to the values field well. This time we'll do cost. Now cost has the same problems. It's got an ugly heading, so we have to rename that total cost and go back to that specific column and select total cost and give it two decimal place precision. The implicit measure defaults to sum, but for either total cost or total sale, we can click this data options button. And then under summarization, we could change this to an average so we could see the average sales or the best sale or the worst sale or even the number of sales. I'm gonna go back to sum. Now this is all very easy for the beginner and it's designed this way on purpose to allow easier entry for people when they're just learning Power BI. Now I'm going to go up and create a multi-row card. I'll stretch it out. For the field wells, I'm going to add inventory item and then I'm gonna add sale amount, but then I'm going to add sale amount again. So the first one we'll leave as a sum, but the second one we'll set as an average. We'll add sale amount again, set this one as a max, add sale amount again, set this one as a min, and add sale amount one more time, and set this one as a count. We would definitely want to give the category labels better names. So this could be total sales, average sale, best sale, worst sale, and number of sales. Let's do a small amount of customization on this. For the callout values, I'll increase the font size, and for the category labels, I'll reduce their font size. 
Now notice the decimal place precision in the multi-row card. We seem to be all over the map with precision, so let's go ahead and fix that. Unfortunately, there's nothing in the multi-row card that would allow me to control decimal place precision. If I do a search for things like size, I get the size and the position of the visual, so we're pretty much left with what we've got. Since all of these calculations were done with implicit measures, using the automated features built into the program, let's see if we could do this with explicit measures and take control of our destiny. I'm going to take the matrix, since I've already applied all the formatting to it, I'm going to copy that. We'll go over to a new sheet and paste it down. Then I'll go into the field wells, and I'm going to remove the total cost and the total sales. Back in the table view, let's create some measures. Now you can create these measures in the report view, but I want to do it here so I can make a point. So we'll come up here and click new measure. By the way, if you're wondering how I increase the size of the formula bar, I place my mouse pointer in the formula bar, held down control, and then move the mouse wheel forward and backwards to zoom. Now the name of this measure will be total cost. And just like in Excel, we can use a sum function in our formula. In this case, I want to get the sum of the cost field in the sales data table. Close parentheses, enter. Notice we do not get a column of calculations added to our table. This measure, an explicit measure, is waiting to be used in a visual, so it won't actually produce any output until you put it in a visual. Now a good habit to get into is right after you create the measure, apply the formatting to the measure. So I'm gonna go up and make sure that it's a currency style, and I'm gonna give it two decimal place precision. Now while here, I'm gonna create another new measure, and this one will be total sales. This will use a sum function just like before, but to sum up the sale amount column. Close parentheses, and then I'm gonna apply a currency style with two decimal place precision. Let's go back to the report view, and in our matrix for the values, I'm going to add the total sales measure and the total cost measure. Notice how they come in with proper headings and the formatting is applied, currency style, two decimal places. If we were to look at the data options for one of these, we cannot change the summarization because the summarization is baked into the formula. So if you wanted this to be an average function, you'd actually have to change the sum to average at the formula level. Also notice our measures have these little calculator icons. So this is to indicate that this is a measure. Now let's go ahead and create a multi-row card. We'll stretch it out. And for the multi-row card, I'm going to add the inventory item, the total cost measure, and the total sales measure. Let's go up and create a few more measures. So back in the data view, I'll go to new measure. This one will be called best sale, and it will use a max function, just like Excel. And we're gonna take the sales data, sale amount. Close parentheses. We'll set it to currency style, two decimal place precision. We'll create a fourth measure called worst sale, and this will use a min function, finding the smallest sale in the sale amount column. Set our style, decimal place precision. And finally, our fifth and last measure, number of sales. This will use a count function, just like Excel, and we're going to count the number of items in the sale amount column. Now for this one, I'm going to use a comma style, and we're already at zero decimal places. Returning to the report view, I'm going to select the multi-row card, and now we'll go to add data. We'll do the best sale, the worst sale, and the number of sales. And as always, we could apply a little formatting. The values all increase their size, and the labels all decrease their size. Everything is titled properly, everything is formatted properly. Let's take our matrix and copy it, start a new sheet, paste it down, and I'm going to remove the total cost field. Now let's take this matrix and copy it, and I'll remove the total sales and the inventory item. Now remember I said that the output of one measure can be used as the input for another measure, and this keeps you from having to write the same measure over and over and over again every time you want to use that logic in a different situation. So I'm going to switch back to the table view, we'll start a new measure, and this one will be called football sales. Now for this one, I only want to see the sale of items that are footballs. To apply a filter to an existing calculation, we're going to use the calculate function. The calculate function is widely considered to be DAX's most important and valuable function in the entire function library. So the first argument for calculate is a formula, and that formula we already wrote in the form of total sales, comma, and now a filter we want to apply. So for this one, we're going to take the inventory item and only perform a total sales calculation where that inventory item is football. Close parentheses, enter. I'm going to give it a style of a currency style, two decimal place precision. If we go back to the report view, we'll go back to our build section, and in the values, I'm going to add football sales. And now we see the total sales for each sales rep, but only for football sales. So we can see here for Fred, in the original matrix, Fred sold almost $950 worth of footballs. 
he sold $950 worth of footballs here. His total sales were over $5,000, but his footballs were only about $950. We've got Fred and Jane and John listed, but notice we don't have Mary listed because Mary did not sell footballs. Now here's a little pro tip for you. Since it's almost always in your best interest to write explicit measures, once you've created them, you don't want the user to accidentally invoke an implicit measure. So a good idea would be to take things like the sale amount and the cost and hide those fields. Now one way to do this is to go back to the table view, and then when you hover over a field over on the right hand side, we see what looks like an eyeball icon. I'm going to click on it, and that will put a slash through it, showing that sale amount is now currently hidden. I'll do the same thing for cost. I'll hide that. And just for fun, if you aren't going to use the quantity in any of your visuals directly, you could hide that as well. I'll go back to the report view, and now when we're adding entries into the field well, this list is a little less cluttered. And if you want, you could even go in here and rename all these measures and do something like put an underscore as the very first character. This way, when you look for your measures in this pop-up, all of your measures are at the top of the list. So now that you've seen the advantages of explicit measures over implicit measures, hopefully you'll be more inclined to use the explicit version, because ultimately it does make your life a whole lot easier. You can download this file using the link below in the video description. And this way you can go back and see all the formulas that I wrote. And don't forget to take advantage of our ever-increasing video library. And if you have a suggestion for a video, put it in the comments, and I'll be happy to make one for you. Thanks for watching. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.